also want to give a very special thanks. He's been an incredible ambassador to Israel. David Friedman. That's a very uh, great group of people, great group of patriots. They wanted this to happen so badly. They worked so hard. And again, nobody thought it could happen, and they thought it could happen. They never even doubted it. So I want to thank you all very much. Thank you. For generations, the people of the Middle East have been held back by old conflicts, hostilities, lies, treacheries. So many things held them back. Actually, lies that the Jews and Arabs were enemies and that Al-Aqsa Mosque was under attack. Constantly, they would say it was under attack. These lies passed down from generation to generation, fueled a vicious cycle of terror and violence that spread across the region and all over the world. These agreements prove that the nations of the region are breaking free from the failed approaches of the past. Today's signing sets history on a new course, and there will be other countries very, very soon that will follow these great leaders. The people of the Middle East will no longer allow hatred of Israel to be fomented as an excuse for radicalism or extremism, so important. And they'll no longer allow the great destiny of their region to be denied. On my first foreign trip as president, I had the honor of addressing the leaders of more than 54 Arab and Muslim nations in Saudi Arabia. My message that day was very simple. I urge the nations of the Middle East to set aside their differences, unite against the common enemy of civilization, and work together toward the noble aims of security and prosperity. I offered America's friendship. I offered America's help. But I said clearly that the nations of the regions had to decide what kind of a future they wanted for their children and for their families and for their nation itself. No one could make that choice for them. They had to do that themselves. Today, the world sees that they're choosing cooperation over conflict, friendship over enmity, prosperity over poverty, and hope over despair. They are choosing a future in which Arabs and Israelis, Muslims, Jews, and Christians can live together, pray together, and dream together, side by side in harmony, community, and peace. Once again, let me congratulate the people of Israel, the people of the United Arab Emirates, and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain. God bless you all. This is an incredible day for the world. This is a really wonderful and beautiful occasion. I want to thank all of the members of Congress for being here, senators, congressmen, congresswomen. We just appreciate it so much. Everybody wanted to be here. It's a very important day for the world. It's a very important day for peace. Before the party signed the accords, I'd like to ask Prime Minister Netanyahu to say a few words, followed by the Foreign Minister of the United Arab Emirates and the Foreign Minister of Bahrain. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Thank you. Our dear friend, President Trump, First Lady Melania Trump, thank you for hosting me, my wife Sarah, and our entire delegation on this historic day. I want to recognize Vice President Pence, Secretary Pompeo, National Security Advisor O'Brien, and other cabinet members, Jared Kushner, Avi Berkowitz, Ambassador Friedman, and other members of the President's able peace team, Senators, members of Congress, Israeli Ambassador Ron Dermer, his Emirate and Bahraini counterparts, as well as all the dignitaries gathered here on this sunny day. I want to uh, also express my gratitude for all the Israelis who've worked for years, uh, sometimes in less sunny climes, 
to bring this day, and I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, this day is a pivot of history. It heralds a new dawn of peace. For thousands of years, the Jewish people have prayed for peace. For decades, the Jewish state has prayed for peace. And this is why today we're filled with such profound gratitude. I am grateful to you, President Trump, for your decisive leadership. You have unequivocally stood by Israel's side. You have boldly confronted the tyrants of terror. You have proposed a realistic vision for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And you have successfully brokered the historic peace that we are signing today, a peace that has broad support in Israel, in America, in the Middle East, indeed in the entire world. I am grateful to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates and to you, Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Zayed. I thank you both for your wise leadership and for working with the United States and Israel to expand the circle of peace. I am grateful. I am grateful to King Hamad of Bahrain and to you, Foreign Minister Abdul Latif Al Zayani, for joining us, joining us in bringing hope to all the children of Abraham. To all of Israel's friends in the Middle East, those who are with us today and those who will join us tomorrow, I say, Assalamu Alaikum, peace unto thee, Shalom. And you have heard from the President that he is already lining up more and more countries. This is unimaginable a few years ago, but with resolve, determination, a fresh look at the way peace is done, this is being achieved. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Israel well know the price of war. I know the price of war. I was wounded in battle. A fellow soldier, a very close friend of mine, died in my arms. My brother Yoni lost his life while leading his soldiers to rescue hostages held by terrorists at Antebbe. My parents' grief over the loss of Yoni was unrelieved until their dying day. And over the years, when I've come to console the families of Israel's fallen soldiers and victims of terror, I have seen that same grief countless times. And this is why I am so deeply moved to be here today. For those who bear the wounds of war, cherish the blessings of peace. And the blessings of the peace we make today will be enormous. First, because this peace will eventually expand to include other Arab states, and ultimately it can end the Arab-Israeli conflict once and for all. Second, because the great economic benefits of our partnership will be felt throughout our region and they will reach every one of our citizens. And third, 
because this is not only a peace between leaders, it's a peace between peoples. Israelis, Emiratis, and Bahrainis are already embracing one another. We are eager to invest in a future of partnership, prosperity, and peace. We've already begun to cooperate on combating Corona, and I'm sure that together we can find solutions to many of the problems that afflict our region and beyond. So despite the many challenges and hardships that we all face, despite all that, let us pause for a moment to appreciate this remarkable day. Let us rise above any political divide. Let us put all cynicism aside. Let us feel on this day the pulse of history. For long after the pandemic is gone, the peace we make today will endure. Ladies and gentlemen, I have devoted my life to securing Israel's place among the nations to ensure the future of the one and only Jewish state. To accomplish that goal, I work to make Israel strong, very strong. For history has taught us that strength brings security, strength brings allies, and ultimately, and this is something President Trump has said again and again, ultimately, strength <laughs> brings peace. King David expressed this basic truth thousands of years ago in our eternal capital, Jerusalem. His prayer, immortalized in the book of Psalms in the Bible, echoes from our glorious past and guides us towards a brilliant future. Adonai oz le'amo yiten, Adonai yevarech et amo b'shalom. May God give strength to his people. May God bless his people with peace. Mr. President, distinguished guests, this week is Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. And what a blessing we bring to this new year. A blessing of friendship, a blessing of hope, a blessing of peace. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, His Highness, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates. Prime Minister, and my friend Abdulatif Zayani, distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me start by conveying the best regards of the UAE people and the leadership, and especially of Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, to you, Mr. President, and everyone gathered here today. I'll continue my speech in Arabic, and I'm sure there will be translation to that. Aqf al-yawm, amid yad salam, wa astaqbal yad salam. Naqool fi deenna al-islami, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Falbahtha an al-salm mabda asir. Walakin al-mabada tatahaqqaq fi'lan andama tatahawal ila af'al. وها نحن اليوم نشهد فعلا سوف يغير الشرق الأوسط وسيبعث الأمل حول العالم. I stand here today to extend a hand of peace and receive a hand of peace. In our faith, we say, O oh God, you are peace, and from you comes peace. The search for peace is an innate principle, yet principles are effectively realized when they are transformed into action. Today. We, already, we are already witnessing a change in the heart of the Middle East, a change that will send hope around the world. 